Welcome to another episode of Living Your Sparked Second Half. Today's episode, I'm not going to do an intro. I'm just going to get right to the point and I'm going to make this a quick episode, but it's going to be a powerful one, a powerful message because I think it's something that needs to be talked about and it's something I'm seeing too much of recently. And that is mean girl behavior, <laughs> mean person behavior, I should say. I don't necessarily know that it's females being mean, but people on the internet being mean. And I think sometimes on the internet, people, even though people have handles and you know who they are for the most part, they're strangers though, to many of people who put themselves out there, particularly who have businesses on the internet. And so when you put yourself out there and you make a stand for something, you're going to get haters. And so that kind of comes with the territory, but I'm on the email list and follow a couple people who I like very much. And I've met them through my business dealings. They've both been on my podcast. One of them, I've been on two of her retreats. The other one, I've been to retreats with her. And so I know them pretty well. And they are two of the nicest people in terms of, we'll give you the shirt off their back if you need it type of people. The content and the products, services that they provide are highly valuable and truly help people. And I'm going to give you the specific examples and I'm going to tell you who the people are because if you can, I would love for you to support them. But what's crazy is that within a couple of days of each other, I saw both of these people having to deal with mean people, people reaching out and saying things that were just mean. And that's not necessary. That's not necessary. But I know people get triggered. I know that there's a lot of bad energy going on right now. And bad energy is contagious. So when you spend your day watching news that isn't great in the climate we're in right now, that really can affect your mental health. And so if you're somebody who is a news addict, I would highly recommend that you get away from it because I can guarantee you it's your life will be better without it. <laughs> it's not, it's not helping you in life. And if you get irritable on certain days, you might want to check in to see, well, have I watched more news today? or read more news, or did somebody send me something that got me in a tizzy? So I also am going to give four really aspects of when you are somebody who has an urge to reach out because you don't like something or what somebody said, then whether it's online or in person, four well, I say they're aspects because I named each of them and they're aspects. There's a physical aspect, there's a mental aspect, there's a behavior aspect, and there's an energetic aspect. So they're really tips, but they're tips geared toward these different aspects to look at when you feel the urge. All right. So I wish these people had listened to this podcast episode <laughs> before they sent those mean messages to my friends. Okay. So the first example was Natanya Stamboli and she is a yoga teacher and she, her story is I've had her on, I think twice on the podcast. The first time I had her on was just because I was interested in her business. I thought she had a great story to tell because she had a yoga studio in LA when the COVID shutdown happened happened. And so she basically couldn't do what she did. She couldn't pay her yoga teachers. And she was more worried about paying her yoga teachers than she was about paying herself. And she scrambled and started an online business and it just has skyrocketed. But in the podcast interview, I found out she did retreats. And so I was intrigued. I wanted to do a retreat. I went on one of her retreats and I had her back on to talk about the retreat because it was so powerful. It was my first retreat that I had ever, ever been to. And so I've since been on another retreat with her. 
So she's great. Her emails are fantastic. She does free training. She does several free trainings, which are great. I, th I think they're like three days long when she does them. And so she's a giver. There's nothing about her that is selfish, that is mean, that is bait and switch. Mm, not. And she does her free trainings, what she does. And you have probably, everybody's exposed to this now and knows the deal is a lot of people give free training and then they offer a program, a paid program or service after their free training. And people sometimes don't like that. They get mad about that, but they lose sight of the fact they've gotten free training. The person is giving their time to do this training and it's free. And you can get a lot of free stuff. You can go to YouTube and get a lot of free stuff and you don't get an offer. You, you get ads, you get lots of ads, which are offers, maybe smaller amounts, but that's just the world we live in right now. And so you have to go into these free trainings with the mindset, oh, I'm probably going to get something at the end of it, but go in with the mindset of, I don't, I'm not going to buy anything else. I just want this free training. The free trainings that I don't like are the ones where they just don't give you any content or value in the free training. And then they try to sell you something. So that's, the, those are the ones that drive me crazy. But you just know that, okay, don't go to any more of those trainings with that person and move on to the other ones that are more valuable. But Nat gives great free trainings. Nat gives great high value. In fact, I have to tell you with Nat is when I had her on my podcast and we didn't know each other very well, except we were in the same coaching community. And at the time I hadn't been to a retreat. And at the end I was, oh, send me information on your retreat. And she goes, oh, I'll just here's my, um, you can go into my yogi flight school. So that's what she has. She has this yogi flight school and teaches you how to do different yoga techniques, arm balances and headstands and handstands and lots of cool yogi, she calls them yogi ninja tactics. And so she gave it to me. She gave me access into her program. And as a result, I ended up going on two retreats with her subsequently. And I didn't go on those retreats because she gave me free access to her program. But I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that's how generous she is. That's how nice she is. She is a giver. She's not a taker. And somebody wrote her an email and it really bothered me. I mean, I, I, I she sent an email sharing to her audience because it really bothered her and she wanted to talk to her audience about it. And I rarely replied to people when they send out their emails. I don't often read a lot of emails. I'll just delete, 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 delete. But hers, I usually read, which makes you also realize that she puts thought into her emails. But somebody wrote her and told her she was a disgrace. Somebody actually took the time to, after taking free training that somebody had given her, that she didn't have to pay for. And she said she was a disgrace. And she is not a disgrace. I think the person who wrote that email is a disgrace. And that somebody actually takes time to be mean like that breaks my heart. Because there's better things to do with our time than that. So that person has probably watched too much news on that particular day. And so I am going to share when I was telling you about the four aspects and tips around those aspects, I would like everybody who gets triggered by something like that to think about these tips and to go through these different, think about these aspects as I'm calling them. And then once you go through them, then you won't have the urge, I don't think, to be mean and lash out anymore. It's kind of a process. Let's call it a process. A aspects that will put you through. There, there are four different aspects, kind of categories. But if you put them all together, it's kind of walks you through a process to settle your mind down and get you out of that agitated, irked state. So my other friend, 
Valerie Trumbauer. She is a doula. In fact, she's a nighttime doula. So at the middle of the night, she goes over to people's houses and helps people with their babies, their newborns. And she has a ton of content online, all free, that helps people, tips. And on her Instagram, and she is out there helping women who are either preparing to have a newborn or have one and the baby won't sleep or adoptive parents. She helps women get ready when they adopt a baby. And so she has New Parents Academy. So I should also say Natanya Stamboli, hers is Yogi Flight School, and then her retreats are Soul Tribe Adventures. So I'm giving these guys kudos. And if you want to check them out, do it. And if you have, maybe you're not having a baby, because most if you're you're listening to this, you're probably my age. And my ovaries have done their thing and they're all dried up. I don't know. Do ovaries do that? So anyways, I have daughters who this would help. And in terms of the New Parents Academy, although I think they're done having babies too. But Valerie gives great information and she is such a gem. And so she is not somebody who deserves any mean emails or mean comments. But she basically was told by somebody or the person, I guess she, again, maybe did a free training. Oh, I know what it was. It wasn't a free training. Pardon me. What it was, was she had to cancel her workshop or reschedule, reschedule, not cancel, reschedule. And the person was so irritated. And let me tell you, Valerie has done Workshop after workshop after workshop after workshop, never reschedules. Of course, this woman probably just met Valerie and didn't know of that, doesn't have any like track record. She doesn't have any track record with this woman. Valerie doesn't have a track record. So this was maybe her first impression, but she'd like, the, don't make assumptions about people. That's another mistake we make. But she told Valerie she was, she felt she was, being scammed. So she was part of a scam. She was involved in a scam because, because, yeah, I don't think she knows what a scam is, but Valerie did not take her money. Valerie just rescheduled her webinar. And so of course, Valerie was super upset about it. I mean, these two women who are such givers and are doing amazing things in the world by putting themselves out there and they get these mean girls talking to them and really probably ruined their day. So here's what you do, okay? If you're getting irritated or you know somebody who does get irritated easily, tell them to listen to this episode. But oh, you might want to do it under the ruse of, oh, you got to listen to this episode because it might help you help somebody else. Because <laughs> you probably don't want to say it'll help you. Then they might be a mean girl to you. All right. So the first thing, this is the physical aspect. Okay. So the four aspects I'll tell you first, there's a physical aspect, a mental aspect, a behavior and an energetic. Okay. And so, so these are the tips I came up with. And then I just was like, oh, they could, they fall into these different buckets. And so if you could just step through these different buckets as a one, two, three, four process, that will really get you all calm again. It will just make you not want to take action and be mean. Maybe not so much as calm, but I think it'll make you hesitate at least. And that's what you want. So the physical aspect is stop. If you have this, if you're starting to type up a message, you're on your computer, type, 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 type. You want to just stop. Okay, stop. Stop. Take take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. People don't take deep breaths enough. Smokers do, and that's why smokers have a hard time smoking because they're doing the deep breathing stuff. But you want clean deep breathing. And so you want to just stop and take a deep breath and pause. Pause. I'm sure you've heard this before. It's like maybe you write the email, but you save it. You don't send it. Gets, gets it off your chest. 
But I would say there's more value in taking the time to just be quiet with your thoughts than to write an email. Because writing an email, just you're sitting in those negative thoughts. It's like you're sitting in your own stew. And that's not good. You want to get through those thoughts as fast as possible and on to the other side. And so if you can just stop and take a deep breath and pause and start thinking about what you're grateful for, you know, but that's the physical aspect. Just, just stop, stop, physically stop and just take a deep breath. So the second thing is the mental aspect. So that's when you start to get into the head. All right. So you want to think about why did you get triggered? So imagine putting on like your detective hat, just visually put an invisible hat on that would be like your version of this is the hat I would put on if I'm going to investigate a crime. So maybe it's a, a police hat, a detective hat, or one of those little, what is it, an, an, an Andy cap hat? Is that what they are? I mean, if you're my age, you'd you know what I mean, but you're kind of like the little Sherlock Holmes cap, right? But you want to think, why did that make me so angry that I want to write an email and be mean? There's something there that is causing you to react that way. And like I said earlier, maybe you were watching too much negative news. Maybe that, you know, you were scammed before by somebody. And so Valerie reminded you of that situation. It's not her, but it's something that happened. And so this kind of brought back some of those memories. Or maybe in Nat's case, I don't know, maybe you're frustrated because you couldn't do one of the moves in our workshop or something that the way she said something maybe reminded you of somebody that disgusts you. And so she disgusted you, but she really, how could she just, dis, I mean, disgust is a bad, a bad word for somebody that you just met. <laughs> I mean, it takes a lot of, of building up over time, I think, to build a disgust of somebody. And so that's a very strong, powerful word. So that's the mental aspect. And the second step is after you stop and you take a deep breath and you start to think good thoughts, think about what is triggering you. Use it as a, like I said, you're looking, you're a detective, you're trying to locate the problem that you caused for yourself because it's all in your head. <laughs> but you're doing that detective work and you're coming up with, a, it's a learning opportunity. That's what it is. It's a learning opportunity. You'll have an aha moment from that. So you're in your thoughts, but instead of you, you get out of the negative and you're, you're more into constructive. So constructive process of thinking and solving, solving a problem that a problem of your making, but it's, it's still a problem. If you want to be mean, you got to solve that problem because you don't want to be mean. Okay. The third thing is the behavior, the action. So the action you want to take is thinking about how to be kind. So I would say, what is kindness look like? One of the examples I love is when you want behavior, when you want positive behavior or kind behavior, I always think about those slap bracelets that were in, we had these slap bracelets. Maybe they weren't slap bracelets when I was in high school. Maybe I'm, it was more when my kids were in school, but they were bracelets that you could put on and it was WWJD. I did not come from a religious household, but I went to Young Life. So that must be where I got it. But it was, what would Jesus do? If you want to be kind, what would Jesus do? And if you're not into Jesus, then think of somebody who's really kind that you know. The first person that comes to mind when I think of somebody kind, I think of my mother-in-law, who is, doesn't have a mean bone in her body. And 
I always have to warn her. She's so kind that she like picks up strangers and gives strangers money. And she's just, she's a very, very kind. So, you know, it would be, what would Barbara do? So the action you want to take is kindness, kindness. So how many times, think about this, we really put effort into, or I'm, I'm not saying you, but I'm just speaking general, general population and using these two people, I'm sure they're two different people, these two different people as examples, they put that energy and that time into writing these mean things when they could be writing nice things. And maybe they don't want to write nice things to these people, but how about like, okay, let's channel your energy into something else. You learn from that experience. Maybe you don't like that for whatever reason, but you learned maybe why you got triggered. You calm down. You learned why you maybe got triggered. And now you're going to be kind. So where are you going to take some kindness and spread it somewhere? And I know what I'm guilty of is I often will scroll through my social media and I will think something nice about somebody. I will be like, oh my gosh, that's, that's, I agree with that. That's so true. Oh, that's real. I'm so glad she said that. Or, you know, I'll be in my head, but I never say, oh, thank you so much for saying that. Or, oh, that was so nice of you. Great job. I mean, that is all you have to do to be kind. And so the action behavior, the aspect of behavior, that third aspect, the tip behind that is to, instead of taking the behavior of meanness and writing a negative email, how about writing a nice note? And like I said, it can be somebody totally different, but redirect that somewhere else. Turn that negative behavior into positive behavior. And the fourth and final thing the fourth and final aspect that I was speaking of is energy. Ener we're all energetic. We live in an energetic world. We're energetic beings. That is bad energy you're putting out there. And so I want you to consider how that impacts not only you and your energy. Have you ever heard somebody say, and I'm, I've said it, I know I've, it, this has happened to me, is like, your day, one thing in the morning, you spill your coffee, right? Oh my God. Or you forget to put the coffee cup under the Keurig, right? I've done that. And then you take your coffee in your car to drive to work. And then you spill it on yourself. And then you're just like, by the time you get to work, you're like, I am having a bad day. Well, do you think that maybe the energy, that that bad energy, that just not putting the coffee cup under the Keurig machine, maybe led to the next thing, which would then lead to the next thing? And then you probably have a fight with your boss in the office, and then you trip going to the bathroom and sprain your ankle. I mean, think about it. We do this to ourselves often because of the energetic aura that we carry when something bad happens or when we get angry, when we get mad. And so think about the energy. And that's why I, the first thing I said is stop, pause, take a breath because you're changing your energy. And that's the first thing you got to do is change your energy. But I, I also want you to know how there's an energetic karma that happens as well. So you know, you reap what you sow. You probably heard that saying. You get what you give. <laughs> so if you give mean, you get mean. So if you are thinking, well, gosh, everybody's mean to me. Well, are you nice to people? And so that is what you have to think about. And so what you have to start to do is to give people the benefit of the doubt First of all, don't think the worst of people in the beginning and know that 
the saying is so true that you attract more fly. I think that saying is bees, but you attract more bees with honey than vinegar. But somehow I think it turned into flies. But who wants to attract flies? Nobody wants to attract flies. <laughs> when you get the honey out, you rather have bees than, than flies. But that's so true. Vinegar is our meanness and honey is our sweetness. But energetically, we are spewing vinegar out in the world. And you can shift that very easily by calming down, taking a breath, putting a positive note out to somebody. If you forget to put your coffee cup under the Keurig, laugh it off. Laugh is one of the best things you can do to counter that negativity. So laughter equals honey. <laughs> so remember that. So just to review real quickly is... There's the physical, there's the mental, there's the behavior, and there's the energy and the energetic aspect. And so just go through those steps of reframing how riled up you are. I mean, you got to reframe your brain and you've got to slow down your body. So it's we're one big package. And so... The point is, is you have the control to do that. And when you energetically put out vinegar in the world, you're hurting more than your, yourself. People don't realize they're hurting themselves. They're hurting the person that they're being mean to. They're affecting that person's circle, close circle specifically but they're, it's deflecting back onto them. And ultimately it's affecting the world because we have this aura, like I said, and the aura permeates. And so it's affecting our circle as well when we do that. And our circle can expand very much so. So you think about it, you know, I said, you have a bad day, you go to work. Well, then your work, it's a bigger circle. Your work is your bigger circle. You go to the grocery store, you hit, you come across a stranger, you're mean to the stranger. That's a bigger, bigger circle. Your circle is, gets wider and wider. So the impact becomes greater and greater. And so that, that's my point. And so this episode is simply about be nice, be nice. Let, let our new motto be, I'm going to be the kindest person I know today. Wouldn't that be great? I'm the kindest person I know today. And don't let stuff ruffle your feathers and stop watching the news. <laughs> All right. Take care and I'll see you next time. 